Okay, we are in chapter one, section eight, called Difference of Squares. Uh, this is for Integrated Math 2 or IM2. Uh, so I'm just going to start off by going over the screens. Um, so this is the, the first screen you will see when you click on a homework assignment, with the exception of two pieces. Students will see a due date here. On the teacher preview, I don't get a due date, but you will. Um, you will always see attempts here, and this is my first attempt of unlimited attempts means I can submit this assignment as many times as I would like. So we'll come back to submission in a second here when I start talking about that. This tells me there are five questions in this particular assignment. There will be anywhere from one to 10 questions on your assignments. Grading policy is best score, um, meaning that whatever, whichever attempt is the best one is the one you get to keep. Partial credit means that if I answer one of five questions, I get credit for my one question. This down here, um, is just a reminder so once you've started your homework you need to finish it and what that means is if I click start um, this is the second piece that you will see on a, your student side that I do not see on my teacher side there is a submit assignment button on your screen and from this point forward once you click start you need to click that submit button before you leave this screen so and I'm not talking about going from problem to problem I'm just talking about leaving the assignment okay um, so whether or not you do anything on the screen, you want to click Submit Assignment. If you've answered one or five or four, three or two, it doesn't matter how many you've answered, you always click Submit Assignment when you're ready to leave. And you can come back on another attempt and try the rest. Okay? It always saves your progress. This does two things, though. It tells us you know, which assignments you've been working on and how many you've completed in that assignment. So we get to see the grade for it. And also, it keeps the system from locking you out of all of your other assignments. If you just leave this screen without clicking that submit button, like if you just exit out of it, or if you go back to the home menu, it will lock everything else. You have to come back to this assignment the next time you log in. So it's definitely very inconvenient for that. You want to get in a very good habit of clicking that submit button every single time you want to leave. All right. Um, there are three tools on the side here. The first one is explanation, and it's telling us we are going to lose our question attempt here if I click OK. And the reason for that is it's going to give me the explanation for this exact problem. So I don't want, um, it's not going to give you the solution and then type the answer in is the, the issue there. Um, so you'll get a little red X here and you'll have to click submit assignment and you can go, you know, try again or quick retake and it'll come in and it'll give you another example here or another problem so that you can try it. Um, Example just opens up a new screen here, kind of a pop-up window, and it gives you an example of what we're looking at here. So this is actually the difference of squares, and this is a pattern that we want to be able to recognize. So when we have, and I'm gonna write this at the top of our screen here, when we have two pieces and both of them are squares and there is a difference in the middle, then the pattern is we take the square root and the square root of the first term and the second term, and we go the first term plus the second term, the square root of these two, sorry, and then the, the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. So immediately I can factor if I know this pattern. So this is actually what we're gonna do on this next screen here. Um, and this shows you, you know, exactly how this works out, where you take square root, square root, I have them added together, I have them subtracted from each other. And it makes it very quick if you can recognize this pattern. Um, you can do it without this pattern, but this one makes it definitely much faster. Um, all right. So the last piece here before we jump into this problem is the message center. So you can message your teacher. This will open an email message to your teacher with this assignment attached so we know exactly where you're having trouble. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So we were just talking about difference of squares there. So I have a square and I have a square. I'm going to take the square root of both of these pieces. And the other important part is it needs to be a difference. If that's a plus sign, this pattern does not work. It has to be a difference of squares. Um, so I have V and I have 7. So I'm going to have V plus 7 and V minus 7. And ta-da, I have factored it. It is all done. So let me type these in. Plus 7 and... V minus seven. Okay, we are going to go to our next piece here. So this one we have eighty-one minus four v squared. 
So same thing, I'm gonna go 81 minus four b squared, and I'm gonna have square root is nine, square root is of four is two, and square root of v squared is v. And I have a difference here. So it's a difference of two squares. So now I have nine plus two v, nine minus two v, and I am all done. See how quick that is? We recognize that pattern and we can apply it. And then we, we can very quickly factor these pieces. And sometimes you have to do this twice within a problem. So we, we definitely wanna be able to recognize this as we move forward. All right, I'm going to go ahead and erase these guys here. Get them out of my way so we can keep moving. Okay, so now we have 4x squared minus 81 at y squared. So our square root for this one, I'm, and I did this on the last one, but I didn't really kind of slow down and explain. You need to take the square root of all the pieces here. So 4 square root of 2, x squared has a square root of just x. And then 81, that would be square root of 9, y squared would be y. So here are my two pieces. I have 2x plus 9y and 2x minus 9y. There we go. I have already factored. Super, super quick there. 2x plus 9y and 2x minus 9y. All right. So this is probably going to be one of our faster videos. All right, 27w minus 48w cubed. So it kind of looks like I can't factor this one with this pattern because 27 is not a square and neither is 48. But what I can do is I want to factor out a greatest common factor first and then see if there's going to be a difference of squares left over. So with these guys, I know I can divide both by 3 and I can divide both by W. So if I divide 27 by 3, I get 9 and the W's divide away, minus 48 divided by 3, um, and that is, let's see, 48 divided by 3, that is 16, and then W cubed divided by W leaves me with W squared. So now I am, in fact, left with a difference of squares because 9 is a square, and 16 W squared is also a square. I can take the square root of both of these pieces. So now I'll write this down below. I'm going to have my two pieces, so I have 3 plus 4w and 3 minus 4w. This just becomes an extra um, factor. And actually, I should have three pieces there when I get to the end. So 1, 2, 3, because there is a cube in here that tells me that there should be three of them. It's kind of a quick way to know how many solutions you should have. Um, all right, so I have 3w, and then I have 3 plus 4w, and 3, 3 minus 4w. All right. Perfect. One more, and we are all done with this one. Oh, why didn't this? There we go. Oh, and I erased part of my pattern up there, but that's all right. Okay, so we have 2v cubed minus 2v cubed y to the fourth. Okay, so this one is definitely a little weird looking. 2 is not a square, and then we have some cubes in there. So it tells me I'm going to try to factor something out. So in this case, I can factor out a 2 from both of them. I can also factor out the v cubed. That can, that can come directly out also because v cubed and v cubed, they both have a cube. So 2v cubed, well, that's 1. If I do 2v cubed divided by 2v cubed, 2v cubed y to the fourth, well, again, the 2v cubed is canceling, and I just have y to the fourth left over. So this one's a little bit of a trick because it kind of looks like it is some of the students might go, oh, one's not a cube, or one's not a square. One is actually a square. One times one is one. So the square root of one is one. The square root of this one is a little different. It would be y squared times y squared. So the square root is y squared. So I'm gonna have two v cubed 
and then I'm gonna have one plus y squared and one minus y squared. This looks done, but it's actually not quite done yet because this is another difference of squares. One is a square and y squared is a squared. So I can, again, take the square roots and I can do this one more time. So I have one plus y squared. That stays the same, but now this one is gonna be one plus y and one minus y. So again, I see this four here. That tells me that I should have four roots. It's, it, again, it's just a very quick way to let me know how many I should have. Um, so I have four pieces down here, one, two, three, four. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, that was quite a few. I had to, to factor out the two V cubed, and then I had to take the difference of squares, and then I had to take the difference of squares again. So, um, and I think this one follows that pattern pretty consistently. I remember doing this one in class, and it did that same idea where we had to, to take the, the difference of squares twice. Because um, I know I've been doing different problems in class here. One minus, nope, sorry, one plus y, and then one minus y. And it wouldn't have mattered if I typed in one minus y, and then the, the last one was one plus y. That really doesn't matter. I can switch the order of the factors as long as I take the entire piece and switch the position. Alrighty, so that was section 8, and I will see you in section 9.